Look at these beautiful accent pillows. And guess what? I stenciled them myself. I am Jana from paintapillow.com and I would love to show you how easy it is to create designer pillows just like these using our Paint a Pillow stencil kit. Designer pillows are such a fabulous way to personalize your home and you will be amazed how fun and easy it is to make these. You're gonna love it! Now let's go stencil some pillows! Our Paint a Pillow kit includes everything you need to create your own designer pillows. So here's how it works. You've got your painting frame, you've got your pillowcase with cardboard insert that drops right in and the zipper side goes right at the bottom into that zipper slot. This is to keep things flat. Then you have a stencil that goes right on top and get fastened to the frame using these little tabs that I bent outwards. This is so that you don't have to use any tape. But best of all is that this comes to you pre-assembled so you're ready to stencil straight out of the box. So we start by shaking the paint that came with your kit and we're gonna stir it, make sure it's all nice and even. And we're gonna pour a little bit of that paint onto the tray that came with your kit. Okay. Now we're going to load our dense foam roller with that paint. An important thing about loading that roller is that you want even absorption of the paint into the surface of the roller because if it doesn't absorb evenly, we can get some blotchy results that we don't want. So this is how perfectly loaded roller looks like. And now it's just as easy as rolling your stencil. Start rolling your stencil, building up coverage, and don't press on your roller too hard, because if you press too hard, you may get some bleed, which we do not want. See how easy it is? Just rolling over the stencil. Aim for solid coverage. If you feel like your coverage is not perfect, just roll a little bit more. If you feel like there is not enough paint on your roller anymore, go ahead and reload it by using the same technique. Evenly distribute the paint on your roller. As you get closer to the edges, you might notice that the paint doesn't cover as well. Don't worry about this, we're going to finish them with the brush that came with your kit. And now that we've finished our main stencil, let's finish the edges with the little stencil brush that came with your kit. We load it with paint by swirling it a couple times on the plate to make sure that paint is nicely worked into the bristles. And now, using pouncing or swirling motion, we finish the edges to make sure they are perfect. Bend the tabs and carefully lift the stencil. I'm very excited to see how it turned out. Wow, it turned out great! Look at this! Isn't this gorgeous? Now we have to let this dry. You can let it dry right inside of this frame or you can carefully take this out and put it somewhere safe to dry. If you like to speed up the drying process, you could use a hair dryer or a fan. And while this is drying, I am going to stencil another pillow. This pillow we are going to do in multiple colors. So I'm placing my pillowcase into the frame, make sure that the zipper pull goes neatly into that zipper slot. And we will be using this beautiful geometric pattern for the multicolor design. It has thick bridges in between openings, which will make it easy for me to work with multiple colors. So I'm placing the stencil and securing it by bending the tabs outwards. For this project, we're going to be using brushes that we offer on our site. Uh, each brush corresponds to the size of the openings of your stencil. General rule is the bigger the opening, the bigger the brush. The smaller the opening, the smaller the brush. And I will be using three colors for this project, nice textile colors. I selected yellow ochre, gray, and black. It's a beautiful and trendy color scheme, and I'm very excited to see how this will turn out. When stenciling with multiple colors, it's a good idea to start stenciling from light to dark, meaning you start stenciling with your lightest color, and then go towards your darkest colors. We do it to avoid possible paint smudging. 
So in this case, our lightest color is ochre, yellow ochre. So I'm putting it on my brush by working it into the bristles of my brush with circular motion. And now, using the pouncing or swirling motion, I'm gonna do certain elements of my stencil in yellow ochre. See, I'm using a pouncing motion, up and down. Another motion to use is the round swirling motion, as if I'm sweeping. Aim for a solid paint coverage, but expect some modeling here and there. But after all, it's an artistic project, and it actually some modeling adds to the beauty and handmade effect of it. Make sure you stenciled every element in yellow before switching to your next color. Now I'm gonna stencil in gray, taking my second brush, loading it with color, working it into the bristles. And using pouncing motion, filling in all the elements that's supposed to be gray. Be careful not to get into any previously painted yellow areas and also not to pick up any yellow paint on your gray brush. Try not to put too much paint on your brush. You need very little paint, just a little dab and a little swirl so the paint gets evenly worked into the bristles of the brush. Don't be afraid to push the stencil down with your fingers. Sometimes towards the edges of the stencil, certain elements can get slightly raised. So don't be afraid to press it down. Okay, now I'm ready to switch to my last color and I'm using the tiny brush since the element that I'm going to stencil is a very, very small little diamond, which I'm gonna do in black. You see, this is why we're stenciling from light to dark because dark color usually doesn't get contaminated with other colors. But it could work the other way around. If we started with black and then finished with yellow, you could possibly pick up some black on your brush when doing your yellow elements, and that will be harder to control. So always stencil from light to dark. Make sure you got everything covered before removing your stencil. All right, let's take the stencil off. I will bend the tabs and off comes the stencil. Wow, look at this one. Isn't it great? Beautiful colors. My favorite color combination, yellow, gray, and a little bit of black. And as you can see, you can create any possible custom color combinations to match your decor perfectly. So while this is drying, let's go check on the previously painted pillow. Our beautiful stencil pillow cover has dried completely and I'm about to take out the cardboard insert. I'm unzipping the pillowcase, freeing up all the corners and the top and it slides right out. Now this is ready to be stuffed. If you plan on washing or dry cleaning your pillow, you must heat set your paint. This is done by covering the pillow with the cloth and slowly ironing it for 30 seconds in each spot according to paint manufacturer's instructions. This permanently heat sets and seals the paint and prevents it from fading away in the washing process. And here's your finished pillow. Look how great my pillows turned out. And I took this one even further by embellishing it with little studs and cute tassels that we also offer on our site. What a fun DIY project that was. Now you know the secret to a smashing room makeover. It's paint a pillow. Unlock your creativity and personalize your home with designer accent pillows that you make yourself. Stay creative and I'll see you next time.